Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about why the evolution of AI has caught humans by surprise. I think ChatGPT, when it was released in November 2022, caught a lot of people off guard, including me, though I should perhaps have known better. This is also the story of why humans can't easily comprehend exponential growth. <laughs> I have a PhD in computer security, so I'm not an expert in machine learning and AI, but I've watched it evolve in academia and in the world. Here's my perspective on three things, how AI has developed over time, why did ChatGPT catch everyone by surprise, and briefly, what does this mean for our future? Let's get started. The development of AI was slow at first, but there were some pretty amazing algorithms early on, even like A stars basically solves pathfinding. It's amazing. And after a while, everyone just gets used to these amazing algorithms and they say, that's just search. And that was the fate of AI for a long time. There'd be these various small advancements and every time people got used to it, they would say, that's just search. Then AI started to hit a bunch of different milestones in terms of playing games. It started to beat the best humans at various games. Chess, Jeopardy, Go, Starcraft 2. Each of these games is more difficult than the last. The next logical steps would be robotics or self-driving cars. At least that's what everybody thought until ChatGPT came out. This was the first system to do general reasoning in human languages. Just to give you an idea of how powerful ChatGPT and GPT-4 really are, here are a couple of things you can do with them. You can create websites from hand-drawn sketches. You can code entire video games, like a thousand lines of code. You can create security exploits, write lawsuits, and even pass the bar exam that lets you become a lawyer. Write fan fiction for any combination of characters in any style from any novels. Advise on how to run a business. And write translate and reason in 26 different languages. I think it's safe to say it's a really big step in the capabilities of AI. And the reason I said at the beginning that I should maybe have known that this would happen is that I received a hint in the form of a conversation with a new professor who was joining my university at the time who studied large language models. And she said that they had developed this like question and answer type language model that could go back and forth maybe five or six times and they were planning to use it for like customer support stuff and whatnot. But, you know, she didn't seem that enthusiastic about the future possibilities. And that was only three years ago. So this is why I say I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. So why didn't we see this coming? Chat GPT took the world by storm. Well, technologies in general have an adoption S curve. Starts out with very slowly and no one using it, and then eventually picks up very rapidly until it eventually starts to level out again. So at the beginning of that S-curve, it's basically research and development, right? And then as the S-curve is kind of picking up, that's when people start adopting it. That's where ChatGPT is now. And then eventually it will level off because everyone who's going to adopt the technology has already adopted it. All the uses we could envision for that technology have already been brought about. Basically, AI was in this you know, research and development phase for a long time. And now we're starting to see the beginning of that exponential growth because every technology does grow exponentially given time. And the reason that we as humans are pretty bad at predicting this is that we don't really have good mental models for exponential growth because everything in our world is linear. We evolved in this spatial environment, this spatial 3D environment where things basically work linearly. You know, if you walk for 10 minutes, you go 10 times as far as if you walk for one minute. When asked to predict the future, we look at the last 10 years and use that to predict the next 10 years, and we assume that we'll go at the same rate. Given time, exponential growth is extremely powerful, as anyone who has benefited from compounding interest on an investment knows. Here's an analogy. Let's say you like reading a book per week. After 10 weeks, you would have read 10 books. After 20 weeks, you would have read 20 books. But now, let's say you somehow develop the ability to increase your reading speed exponentially by a factor of two every week. So in your first week, you read one, then you read two books, and you read four books, and you read eight books, and so on. After 10 weeks, you would have read a thousand books. And after 20 weeks, you would have read a million books. And these are just large numbers, but another way to conceptualize it is if you are doubling the number of books you're reading every week, then each week you can read a new book plus read all of the previous books. So by the 10th week, you read one new book and you read all the books again that you had read in the ninth and the eighth and the seventh and so on. 
that's how rapidly this grows. I'll just draw another quick analogy here. Everyone knows about Moore's law where computers are basically getting twice as fast every 18 months. So at a certain point, you can just run emulators to run old games and old programs, even though at the time that was the fastest and best hardware available. But at some point you can just redo all of history because you have the resources in which to do it. Let's draw a timeline of ChatGPT here. So ChatGPT is basically version 3.5 of this GPT model. And let's look at how large these models are. So GPT version one in 2018 had 117 million parameters, which is basically how you can measure AI model complexity. GPT-2 had 1.5 billion, GPT-3 had 175 billion, and now GPT-4 has about 1 trillion. That is about 8,000 times larger in only five years or 9.6 times larger per year. So AI models right now are not getting twice as large every year, they're getting 10 times as large every year, which is incredible. That's why no one saw chat GPT coming because this is exponential growth on a massive scale. A lot of what I'm talking about is actually coming from the works by Ray Kurzweil. I'll leave a bunch of links in the description below for his videos and books and so on. I just wanna say that eight years ago, Ray Kurzweil predicted that in 10 years time, there would be personal AI assistants that got to know you and were really capable of reasoning and working on your behalf. And I think it's safe to say we pretty much achieved that in eight years instead of 10. His next prediction was that in 20 years, so that would be 12 years from now, that there would be brain computer interfaces that actually worked by having nanobots inside your brain, which, might sound insane, but computers are getting smaller and smaller, and this is all subject to exponential growth at massive scale. Ray Kurzweil believes that we will slowly merge with machines, and that means that our thinking will slowly merge with machines too, in what he calls hybrid thinking. This might seem kind of crazy, but we already do a form of hybrid thinking in the sense that we have computing devices that connect us to the cloud, and when we want to perform certain actions, we kind of use some cloud computing resources for a moment to do a Google search or look up the lyrics for a song or leave a message to someone halfway across the world. And on Ray Kurzweil's timeline, by the year 2045, we would have reached the technological singularity, which is his term for the point at which the main driver of technological progress becomes artificial intelligence and not human intelligence because AIs would be billions of times more powerful than human intelligence at that point. He calls it the singularity because at that point, our reasoning about the future breaks down. We can't really predict what's gonna happen beyond that point because we, we would no longer be the primary architects of the future. The term comes from a singularity in physics, which is the point at which physical laws break down because you've reached the middle of a black hole and you're at infinite gravity in one point or something like that. So finally, Let's talk a bit about what all this means for our future. Well, our future is one of exponential growth and it scares people a lot. People hear things like our brains are gonna merge with computers and we're gonna reach a technological singularity where we don't really know what's gonna happen. And that is scary. And there are many, there are many potential outcomes for this trend of technological innovation and where it ends up. But I think the most likely one is that we just keep using innovations and artificial intelligence and so on to enhance our own abilities the exact same way that we are already doing it with phones and with chat GPT and personal AIs and that all these future things like advances in medical technology and advances in interfaces and so on are just going to make us even more capable. So it's not that machines are going to come take over but rather that we are slowly going to develop more and more capabilities until the previous generation of humans wouldn't really recognize or or fully understand what we would be working on. So in the short run, everyone's jobs are going to be transformed in some way, right? As AIs get developed for different pieces of work, but there'll be many new jobs too, and big societal changes, right? Society is gonna to have to invest in education, in welfare. And my advice to everyone, to individuals, is to develop an interest in these AI tools, develop some expertise in them while they're still evolving, become an early adopter, because they'll let you do your current job and new jobs with surprising ease. It's like the first people given the power to do a Google search. <laughs> a lot can come out of that simple ability.
In conclusion, it's very difficult to develop an intuition for exponential processes. And the only way really is to constantly have touch points in on what's happening. Keep seeing what's new in, in an area, for example. But either way you look at it, we probably have a technological singularity ahead and not that far away, just a few decades. So it's a very interesting time to be alive because we may see more in our lifetimes than generations of humans have before us. Well, that got fairly philosophical. But anyways, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.